Okay, so hi everyone. Um, Orgelitz from Melanox, and this is a joint work with Vu and Parav. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, um, the V switch side of SRIOV, of live migration with SRIOV, but I will have to do some quick reminders for you, um, which will be uh, quick because it's it's a background. So if you go back in previous NetDevs, we were talking about uh, the fact that SRIOV has few drawbacks, uh, and one of them that live migration is not supported. Uh, I think it was in Seoul where a few few guys uh, were, were talking about that um, also in a workshop, and later um, a solution has been uh, decided by the community uh, that if you want to uh, use virtual functions on the one hand, but on the other hand, you want to use you want to have support for live migration. Um, some solution was found that integrates with Virt.io, and I will sketch it uh, quickly. And my, my focus today will be on the hypervisor side, because uh, in virtualization, you have uh, virtual NIC in the VM, and you have some virtual switch on the hypervisor. So I will uh, quickly sketch the um, what solution was the decided for the, um, how, do, how does the guest side looks when you want to apply live migration and on the one hand and other one, on the other hand use SRIOV. Um, and um, how does it looks? What, are, what is the gay side of thing? And then I will move to the hypervisor side which is the focus of my uh, talk today. Um, I will um, sketch a requirement and then I will do a triage reminder uh, on how switch dev, uh, um, on the switch dev mode of managing v switches for Nix, um, and then I will go to my what we what we did in this work with the how do you how do you do live migration with this? So this is actually jumping directly into the water. This is the VM side of of this the commu the, the the solution that was made by the the community. So again, bear in mind that. You want this VM to use uh, a virtual function which is path through into the VM, and, um, and th th that's, what, uh, what, what that's what you want to do on the steady state. Like when live migration is not running, people want an accelerated uh, way to do networking in the VM using path through uh, device, okay? Uh, the way uh, it was decided to, um, to implement that for live migration is something we call in the community a three three native model, and this is, uh, this is called three native model because there are three natives involved, which I'll explain, uh, but there are other models of NetVSC and other hypervisor which are two native or one native. Uh, by the way, uh, Michael Zirkin, the, um, Michael Zirkin, the um, uh, Virt.io uh, maintainer, uh, actually made uh, this week uh, an excellent uh, blog post that explains the, the VM side, and he sent it on the native mailing list. Your, uh, Michael is here, no? Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I, and I um, re recommend everyone to, to read the, the blog post to explain this in details. Here I will just have to, to run over this because it's just a background to my, to my work. So th in the three native model, um, under uh, VMM QMU directives, the virtual net on the, hi on the VM actually gives birth to a failover device. So it's the only creature on earth that gives birth to his mother. <laughs> uh, and it's an upper device. Uh, and it was done that this way in purpose. Like, we were looking in the community, uh, um, and this work, <laughs> of course, is of uh, Sridhar from Intel, also here. Sridhar? Ah, hi. So, so um, uh, um, under a VMM directive, under a bit, a, uh, a, 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 a Virtio uh, feature bit, the Virtio uh, device instantiate an upper device, which is a special made simply b bonding or teaming, dry, uh, teaming uh, creature, okay, uh, and it, again, it was, it was made this way in purpose. We're, people were looking for a solution which is zero touch from the VM application standpoint. They don't see all this, uh, all this happening. It's wh where the kernel goes up in the VM and does the virtual net, they get, hey, you're now a standby. So, so they instantiate the upper device, the failover device, and, and they put themselves as the standby. A and the tricky part of it that there is a very simple criteria to hook the primary device, the virtual function device, into this failover scheme. is just find another device on the system that has the same MAC address. That, this is it. So again, the virtual device get, goes up, 
instantiate a failover device, and the failover device would hook the virtual function device if it has the same Mac, and it, was and it would use it as long as it's up and running. If the, VS if the virtual function device is hot unplugged out, as we'll see in a minute in live migration, or if it doesn't have a carrier, it goes back to the standby. So again, this is it, a very simple model, and the VM, um, the VM application, the whole network is a stack of the VM, uh, like the IP address or whatever, they, they bind to the upper device. So that, that's, the, that's, that's the guest side of thing. Uh, and again, in virtualization, you always have a backend uh, in the hypervisor. If it's a virtual not net, so it's the classical backends of many types, top devices, Mac VTAP also. Uh, in SRLV, it's more tricky. Uh, and what we're doing, dealing with the switch dev mode, there is some software backend in the hypervisor, the representers, which I'll explain later, but it also has a hardware backend. So it's, that's why it's a dashed line. It's uh, less, uh, more, more sophisticated. So again, this is just text that explain uh, what I said. We have a three net dev model and, um, um, and the criteria to hook. So um, w once we, the system is up and running, we have, uh, we have uh, accelerated data pass that the VM uh, is uses, uses, and this was introduced by Sridhar and, uh, and company in I from Intel in 4.18, uh, and it's starting to appear in, distro in distros, okay? The standard bit uh, was added to the virtual specification, and we are waiting for the <laughs> QMU uh, patch to support that. We were talking about Michael in the, in the break. Uh, so this is a fairly new stuff, and it's in VMs, and now let's talk about the hypervisor. Um, so how would, how would that, once we have this built up, how ge generally speaking, how would we want to use that in, um, in, in live migration? So as I said, the, the, the idea is that because um, there is a net device that the whole VM uh, network stack sits on, the, the upper device, the failover device, um, on the steady state we want to use that, and when live migration starts, what we want to do is to un how to unplug the virtual function, the VM, then the failover device would, would go to use the, um, the virtual net, the power virtual net channel, and live migration and power virtual are good friends for maybe 10 years or more now by now, so it's a solved problem, okay? So uh, on the migrate, what I call the migrate out host, when we start this live migration, uh, the hypervisor would unplug the virtual function, the guest would do the failover to the standby, and then the guest runs with Power Virtual. Now we can run live migration, continue as usual. Um, in the migrate in host, the, the live migration is finalized, and then the hypervisor hot plugs the VF, um, and it can be, um, in, in this case, flexible. It can be another VF from another. It's, it doesn't have to be the same whatever. Uh, it just has to be the same Mac criteria. And then uh, the guest runs again with the VF data pass. Okay, so this is the basics of the, of the um, idea, um, how, 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 how the VM sites looks and what the hypervisor has to do. But there's something else the hypervi hypervisor has to do and it deals with the, with the switching, the with the virtual switching on the, um, that has to do with uh, my um, virtualization. Okay, so um, what requirement we would, uh, uh, we would pose for, for such a, um, a scheme in the hypervisor? Uh, of course, we want to do. We want to to make sure that switching to into and out of the VM would would be over the data pass in action. So if if we're on the steady state, we want to go through the accelerated data pass. If we are during uh, migration, we want to go through the non-accelerated data pass. Okay, um, because we are dealing with SRIOV, we have to take care of both of the virtual switch in the hypervisor and the embedded switch in the NIC. Okay, uh, we we wanted to, to go to to climb a bit higher. So uh, we want to also support a hybrid and open setup. So some VMs use this, uh, this stuff, some VMs don't use this stuff, so it's an open environment. And um, for Nick, uh, for um, eSwitch, uh, there are two approaches in, in Linux. One is the, what we call the legacy mode, one we call this the switch dev mode. Uh, so the legacy mode uh, can still be used, probably, <laughs> somehow. Uh, um, um, maybe not addressing all the requirements, but some of them. And, and, and I'm not going to explain it today. This is a work by, by Michael, and Michael and uh, Jens, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's work, in, uh, work in progress, or um, um, also we will be, um, uh, once my, I had a slide, but it's in the backup, I won't go there. 
you can you can when the slides are loaded or uh, you can see it. And I will talk today about the switch dev mode. So uh, before, how do I s propose to do live migration in the in the switch dev mode? Uh, be before I'll do that, I'll have a crash reminder um, on the switch dev mode. Um, so the thing in the uh, in the in the in the switch dev mode for SRIOV is that uh, we have representation in the hypervisor. We have a software representation in the hypervisor for the port of the embedded switch. Uh, so in Linux, everything is either in a NetDev or a file or I don't know what. So this representation is of course a, a device, um, and and they resemble the the back in a way the backend the backend the device the devices that the power virtualization has. You can plug them to a um, uh, virtual switch model, um, and this representation used for both. Um, in, in this scheme, when we say unoffloaded traffic, uh, we means uh, that you have um, you have a virtual function running a VM and you have embedded switch, but sometimes the traffic do go through the hypervisor. We refer to this traffic as the unoffloaded one. Typically, it's the first packet of a flow. If you have a, uh, a, a system such as an OBS, which is used as a normal rule in learning, or or sometimes you don't offload all the traffic. For instance, you want to you don't want to offload the ARP floods because they teach you stuff. Uh, and uh, the way to uh, offload stuff, uh, which is common among multiple driver, is through TC Flower. Um, and uh, this is upstream for a few years by now, since 2016, kernel 4.8. And also there is some integration into OVS, but the, um, also for two years by now in OpenStack and higher levels. Um, OVS contains a TC Flower offloading library. Uh, and it's used by various distros and also the, the companies that here, uh, for instance, in Melanox, we have a solution called um, ASAP2 or ASAP squared, and, but other versions have it heavy too. Um, but this, um, and my example of today would also use OVS, but you can do it. So we have some, um, some customers that use this scheme, but without OVS, they wrote their own uh, libraries. Uh, w one thing that we did uh, successful here is that we, we're not married to OVS. We, we, we use TC, so you can uh, people build their own, can own solution. They're using TC. Uh, how this is how this looks like, and this is a bit uh, uh, tricky and not super accurate diagram. <laughs> so you, you have the uh, hardware e switch, and the e switch has those uh, yellow um, half orange ports. So um, each uh, virtual function has their own port, which are v port one, two, and three in this example, and you have the uplink port. Also, the, uh, the PF has their, their, their port, uh, and this is the e-switch, and um, what is called their OVS e-switch is what I'm referring here as this switch. Over there, you have the software representations, uh, which are representers for all the, the, uh, the V port, and that should be also a representative for the uplink. And, um, and the, the tricky thing is that if traffic is offloaded, it, it doesn't go to the software representation. It's only on the embedded switch. But if, if a certain flow is unoffloaded, it, it, it is hooked out from the embedded switch back to the virtual switch. So th the, the gain of all this is that in the end of the day, the, the virtual switch is, um, except for this library that does the offloading, is unaware because they keep using their own model where they have their switch and there are virtual ports in software representation like they would do for power virtual or for containers as was explained to them in the ETH environment. So this is uh, another buildup I'm doing towards the, the live migration. I started with the VM side, and then I explain how uh, switch of mode looks on the hypervisor. Um, now I'm going to the actually to the live migration. I will talk about uh, again some requirements we want to impose. What is the suggestion solution, and some more details. Um, so um, we want to use uh, a model where one port represents the VM because the VM is a compute entity. Uh, and we, we didn't want the, the model on the hypervisor to be actually, the switch model on the hypervisor, to be actually aware that there are two paths to go into this VM. So we, want, uh, we, want, uh, we, we wanted it to be unmodified, the, the, the switch uh, component, for instance, OVS. We wanted, we wanted them to see a single port that represents the VM, even though there are two ways to go into the VM. We wanted to support a hybrid setup, and also, uh, we post another um, advanced requirement is that, uh, and this is also <laughs> a bit confusing, we, we wanted to support the SmartNIC environment, which is uh, uh, different from conventional uh, hypervisor environment because 
we said that in virtualization, each channel to the VM has a backend in the hypervisor. So in SmartNIC, it's possible that the power virtual backend will reside on the host, but the SRIOV backend will reside on the SmartNIC embedded CPU. So we wanted to do something that eventually can also su support this uh, requirement. Okay, so what is the suggested solution? Surprisingly, we want to, we actually suggest to bond the representations on the hypervisor and, and stick this bonded port into the, into the vSwitch, okay? So uh, once we do that, from the standpoint of the vSwitch software, for example, OVS, the flow-based forwarding is applied over this port, okay? They see one port that represents the VM, they see packets coming and going from this port, so they would treat this port as the port that represents the VM and applies, applies their data pass rules with respect to this port, okay? And to address the second requirement of the SmartNIC and so on, we further made it complex uh, we decided to use a second hardware function uh, other than the virtual function which is passed through to the VM um, and stitch it, to connect it to the power virtual um, backend, okay? So how does it look like <laughs> after we did all this uh, crazy thing? So again, I'm looking on the left hand side, you'll see one VM, on the right hand side, second VM. So uh, the, power the accelerated pass is uh, m actually ends up more simple because we have the VF which is passed through into the device, it has a dash line to the representer because it's a dash because sometimes it goes to hardware, sometimes to software. And this uh, uh, left representer goes to a virtual function representer bond. On the right side, we see the VirtIO net. We use the Mac VTAP, which is a standard uh, VirtIO uh, backend, but we use it in path through mode. And we stitch it to a second hardware function. Now to, if, to avoid further complication here, Let's assume that I'm using a second virtual function, that I'm now imposing a requirement to actually allocate two virtual functions per VM. Um, yesterday we had a hardware offload um, um, session and we actually uh, made a proposal of a lightweight hardware functions, but it's um, irrelevant to understand this of today, so I prefer to use a virtual function here, which is a term that people are aware of. So this design suggests to use two virtual functions per VM one for the VM accelerated pass and one for the VM ac non-accelerated pass but on the hypervisor. This virtual function has also a representer and we bond both of them, okay? So what we see on the left side, we see one virtual function representer bond, on the right side another bond. So these are two ports of the virtual switch and the third port is the uplink, okay? Um, now, uh, just quickly, why do we want to use a second hardware function? So th this way, we can, down the road, uh, as I said, uh, support um, um, SmartNIC, and, uh, but, but even before that, um, w b because we, di we did it, so it's a, a bit of counterintuitive, because we used acceleration uh, in the hypervisor for the non-accelerated data pass, from the standpoint of the, um, of the if, you, if, you if you think about how switching is done here, it is always done in hardware. Even if you are doing live migration, which is a bit confusing, but it works. <laughs> so, so, so you don't have, uh, yesterday we had uh, the hardware offload session and, and um, we, we there was some proposal from Peter from Metronome on, on quality of service. And he also explained the real cases where uh, you have a mixture of uh, hardware data pass and software data pass for a packet. It's very confusing and not, um, not working well. So in this case, you always, the, the, the switching is always done in hardware, even, if, if, even during migration, okay? Because there is a piece in hardware which is tied to the hypervisor and this still works, okay? Even th it's during migration. So that, that is why uh, we decided to do this way. Again, technically it's being done by Mac Vita pass-through mode and a second hardware function and the, and the Mac Vita uh, configuration is supported by uh, standard libvirt um, uh, and it can be a lightweight one, okay? Uh, now, how would this uh, uh, work? Uh, in this case, we use a standard bonding or teaming. Uh, it doesn't have to be this special made zero touch failover model. Uh, but again, it's, it's a simple variant of bonding. It's the active uh, backup one. Um, and of course, what we want to do, we want, we want that uh, this bonding has, when live migration isn't in action, when live migration is not running, um, we want this bonding to, to go uh, the, active, the active side of the bonding and the active side of eventually of switching after offloading, which I'll explain, 
will be the accelerated pass, the, the pass through VM uh, virtual function. And what happens is that during migration, as they said, the, the, the provisioning s software, the QNU, would unplug the virtual function. Um, they would uh, unplug the virtual function from the VM, the one on the left, and then we want the bonding, we want them to do two things, actually. We want them to unplug the, the virtual function, the path of virtual function for the VM, and we want them to give a kick to the bonding driver and say, hey, uh, you should, uh, to the bonding instinct, say, hey, you should uh, fail over to the standby. Um, it can be also uh, zero touch, but it depends on the vend vendor firmware. If the firmware can emit uh, an event to our the representer where the, where the um, uh, virtual function is untouched, uh, uh, unplugged from the VM, uh, I would personally prefer not to count on vendor firmers, and but rather patch the, um, the hypervisor to do this bonding failover. It's, ve it's very simple because the hypervisor know they are doing uh, live migration, right? Um, and um, the slow pass, the, 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 the slow pass for this scheme would work as usual because slow pass is software. So even though we force this pass from hardware to the representer and it goes through the bonding, it, this is uh, standard. Um, and, th and here comes the, 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 the essence of the thing. How would the offloading look like? So one thing, bear in mind that uh, flows are ingress. So you always come into an, a switch. Uh, so f uh, ingress flows are basically made of a source port, some matching, uh, manipulation, and then f forwarding, okay? So um, what we have to deal with is that we have to, ca we ha when we look at how this flow looks, so in the general case, uh, the source port is, a, is, a, is this bond, bond that I described. So the, the the virtual switch will configure the flow over the bond device, and now you have to uh, make sure, because you, you cannot decide on the hardware, or, uh, you, you want to handle in the hypervisor the case where the VM would send you through the accelerated pass or the non-accelerated pass. You don't want to start, let's say you have thousands or millions of flow, you don't want to start reinstalling them during your live migration. So um, you w what we want to do is want to install the ingress flow on the bond and then configure it to the hardware in a way that it would work no matter from which channel it would come. So uh, in TC, in TC done through something called TC block sharing, um, the virtual switch uh, OVS uh, installs the, the flow on the, um, on the bond device, but before that, uh, when OVS sees, this is also a patch, nice spice from John from Metronom, um, that OVS actually shares the TC blocks of the bond with the two lower devices, and when you do that, uh, when you share the block between multiple devices, you install the rule on the block, but it is replayed by the kernel to all the offloading drivers for all the instances. So this is one thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, when you look on the destination of a flow, if this destination is a bonded port, uh, we actually uh, require from the hardware driver to properly support uh, a simple HA lag port in their uh, virtual, s virtual switch model. So they could, they, could, they could accept a flow that goes into a bond and realize that in practice, in real time, it can go through one of two V ports in their embedded switch. And, um, and when, when the lag is being changed in from the active to the standby, they should, um, again, smartly program that like a switch table that goes you have n flows going into a, uh, a VM, so you don't want to reinstall all the n flows during a migration. You want to do some, you want to have there some table that either goes left or right, okay? And, and during migration, you just want to do one change on this table. So this is done by um, uh, the, the model, which uh, um, um, uh, this is also exists uh, done by the MLXSW guys a few years ago. Uh, there is a event called change lower state for bonding. So the offloading driver has to properly um, uh, track this event and do the change when, um, when, the, the, um, when the, the hypervisor changes the, uh, the channel. So, so this is it. So uh, this is all supported in the core networking start. Uh, we made it to work on MLX5. We had to do some patches, mostly for the second part. <coughs> But also, uh, it's it's an open suggestion for other vendors. There is no no currently no no changes required in the kernel, other than on the offloading driver, um, and hopefully um, other people will do that. So to summarize uh, the the build up, we use a representer for both channels. We apply uh, bonding on the representation. 
uh, we set the bond as the VM data pass, and then we do failover. And uh, the, the tricky part is in the hardware driver to do this uh, proper uh, configuration for the uh, ingress sync and ingress sync. Okay, so um, I can take a few questions if there are such. We have a mic here. <laughs> no, I need one. <laughs> there are two more. There are two. So uh, this is really good, or I mean, this is uh, pretty much how we would have gone forward with the live migration stuff uh, once we have switched up support. So uh, the uh, <laughs> st we, you, we're still looking for representatives for four years. Yes, and counting. Uh, two years. <laughs> come on, don't make it four. <laughs> uh, Just don't break us, Mac Villan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the part that I didn't quite get is uh, when we are doing the bond for the representatives, right. you're adding your TC rules on the bond, and you're saying that you uh, you know the lower devices would get that TC rule yes. depending on if uh, you do if you share the TC block between the bond and the two representatives. Uh -huh. You create a, bo a TC block, and then you share it between all these three. Uh, and then um, it's something nice work of jury. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is that once you do that, the binding point. Typically, when you install a TC rule in the, all this, so we, we saw many examples in this uh, conference of installing TC rule. So we, you would always create a Q disk on a device, and then add the rule to the device. Now you, you add the rule to the block. And if you add the rule to the block, the kernel is replaying the rule to all the devices involved in this block. So, so and uh, then your offloading driver needs to understand how to properly offload it into your hardware. Right, because I mean you are going to keep one in active and the other in the failover mode. So your driver has to make sure that the you can do it in multiple ways. Typically on switch ASIC, uh, the blocking uh, is more pr uh, is it has a better suitable, so you do not uh, duplicate everything. On NIC hardware, it's more tricky. Uh, currently, in the patches that I made it in MLX5, it was a naive approach to actually duplicate these rules, the ingress side of them. But you can also do it smartly. We have a design to do it smartly without duplication. It depends on your firmware API. If your firmware API allows you to define a block and then bind yep. uh, to this block, this is it. This is what you need because you want to support it no matter how it comes from the VM. Okay? Right. Uh, yeah, and I mean, there is one more extension. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, you have thought about it uh, because the Windows driver does this, that instead of use, uh, w when you do the flooding, uh, you have a broadcaster multicast packet coming in and it's coming into the slow path instead of injecting back into your SRV interf or the pass-through interface, you can actually send it on the... Okay, so so again, wi Windows, y yes, w Windows has a few differences. One, they use, uh, like the win Windows power virtual driver, right? Yes. It's, it's an, a Linux driver, NetVSC. So they were guests in Linux, and they supported that. Bef they supported it before us, but now we are fighting back. <laughs> so in NetVSC, they use two NetDev model in the VM, and they also, as you said, sometimes also on the steady state, they use the the, the non-accelerated pass. Path, yeah. But this is, excuse me, broken because uh, you, it's indeed that also on the um, on the steady state, you can send packet from the VM to the hypervisor in two different ways. Right. But how do you know uh, in the hypervisor which mode? Like you, you don't have you, you don't have LMTP. There is no also in NetVSC they don't have a way and they admitted that if you talk to them you don't have the way to to actually negotiate with the guest which channel is used only the guest knows that okay when in the steady state I mean okay uh, uh, yeah so 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 so, so, so uh, excuse me for fighting back but th I don't think it's a big deal that they they like to send the ARPs from here and not from here. Yeah, I mean, and in our solution at least, because what you're, advantage you're, you see in that? you're still going to, in the slow path, you're still going to go over the PCIe bus because you're backing yes. up with the Mac yes. data. So yes. there, is, there isn't a benefit there, but yeah, I mean, okay. I just wanted to point out. Okay, thank you. More questions? Uh, the, this solution uh, can work with uh, hosts with uh, RDMA traffic? Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, um, so th this solution, 
if we look on the VM side of thing, it doesn't uh, support RDMA because the failover is also only for TCP IP traffic, okay? What, what this solution says that during migration, you hot unplug the virtual function from the VM and then the RDMA connections are broken. But it's still, in practice, you can still use it because uh, many applications, they don't use, um, if you're, if you're, let's say you have a storage application in the VM, you have typically you have some block layer or some shim layer that it, it runs over. And th these layers many times support un un unplug. So if you have a mount point in the VM, which is built eventually over RDMA, the mount will not be functional during migration, but it will not die. If your RDMA driver knows to plug back and re resume the connection, um, it will work. Okay, thank you.